Hello, my name is John Reynolds. Welcome to Extraordinary Life Stories. On this episode, I'm talking with Nadine Maravi. Nadine is an award-winning and celebrated fashion designer and the innovative founder of the luxury fashion brand Nadine Maravi. I want to know what was the catalyst and inspiration behind Nadine's entrepreneurial journey as a self-taught designer following her passion for dressmaking. As a successful and inspirational female founder, I want to know her journey as a female entrepreneur. I'm really looking forward to talking with Nadine, so let's get into it. Nadine, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Tell me, who is Nadine Murabi? Who is she? Um, she's a girl who was born to a Lebanese father and an English mother. She's a girl who started um, a lot of her early career pay- playing international hockey. And she's a girl who struggled outside of that in where she was going and what she was doing. Um, she's a girl who, at the age of 30, was fed up trying to be accepted in life and you know trying to impress people and trying to she just at some point decided that she stopped caring what everyone thought about her it's a defining moment i'm sure yeah um she's a girl who had no experience in fa- in the fashion industry um no training no experience but she's a girl who had a vision and a dream and she's a girl who wouldn't let the word no stop her Formidable. The young Nadine growing up, you know, sounds like we parallel each other. I didn't get on at all well at school from an academic point of view, which made me feel like you know, I wasn't going to be successful or didn't really have a trajectory because it was all about pass your exams, get a good job. What, what are your thoughts on that looking back now? You're, you're a mum now to mm-hmm. two kids as well, right? So that, 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 if you look at the fact that we both didn't, it didn't work for us, and then you look at how you're flourishing now, mm-hmm. blossoming. Mm-hmm. What's broken in the school curriculum? What, can, what needs to change? Yeah, I think growing up, I struggled slightly in the sense of I was good at sport, but I wasn't that academic. I was in the bottom set of every set of every class, and I don't know. It just didn't go down well, and I didn't. I was I was just confused. I I excelled in my hockey because I was good at it. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do in life, but you just kind of got pushed that direction. Um, and yeah, it was kind of like, are you really accepted if you're not smart enough, if you're not clever enough? Um, and I never really felt I was, to be honest. Yeah, I, I totally parallel that. And actually, you know, we, we probably both learned how to use a Bunsen burner at school, mm-hmm. but haven't learned financial literacy. We all end up paying a mortgage or a rent. Mm-hmm. And mindfulness, and really importantly to this conversation, any kind of entrepreneurial um, kind of inspiration, if you like, unless you had that from your parents or people around you, because school is just you know, a sort of tram lines of learn four passing exams to get a job. Mm-hmm. So take me through you know, your sort of professional with sport, which was hockey. Yeah. You're not interested academically. So what career choice did you make? Um, at the time? Yeah. So I played international hockey for 10 years up until about the age of 24, something like that. And then I was like, right, what am I going to do now? So I went away to be a ski instructor. And I um, did a season out skiing, which just a bit fun, living life, experience something new. Then I came back and I was like, right, what, what am I going to do now? And it was at this time where I thought, do you know what? I'm going to make my own events. I'm going to create my own events. And it was when you, know, you could create an event on Facebook. You, um, you, know, you hired the venue, you created an event. And it was when you had to be on a guest list and everyone just put the guest list names through during the week through Facebook. And then on the evening of the event, I charged £20 for everyone to come into a bar, which was free to normally walk into. That's really cool. So there was entrepreneurial spirit there. Yeah, I think, well, entrepreneurial, but also how am I going to earn any money? Yeah, no, I love that. <laughs> but you're taking that initiative. You're, you're, mm. And, and so I'm interested because at what point did you stop doing that and ultimately become name and flashing lights, Nadine Murabi from a fashion brand point of view? So it was actually that that helped me understand that I wanted to get into fashion because I was, I mean, I was basically a party planner and I was doing events each week, um, midweek, weekends, everything. And I got to... 29 and I had like an epiphany one night I was in a club I was dancing on a table and I just thought 
what what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I need I need more than this now. I feel like I've done it. I've, it was fun. I've had a life experience doing it, but it's time for me to move on. And one good thing that happened whilst I was doing the events was I always needed something to wear. And so, you know, I didn't necessarily have the funds to go and spend £3,000 on a dress, but I also didn't want the, you know, just to buy off the high street where everyone else was wearing it. So I got to the age of 29. I remember I was on a train the next day after this night um, and I was on a train and I just looked out the window and I thought, I'm just going to quit my job. I'm just going to quit my job and I'm going to go and buy a sewing machine and I'm going to work it out and I'm going to learn how to sew because it can't be that hard to make a dress. Had you ever had those thoughts before? Like a young girl, were you, in, were you sort of creating or drawing dresses? Was it in there or did it literally just come from, I've got no purpose and I want to follow my passion and that was the moment for you? I think I always was creative and I always wanted to do my own thing. But I spent so many years doubting myself or listening to people saying, well, you're not experiencing that or you've got no training in that. You haven't studied that. So how can you do that? How can you how can you go and go into that industry? And, you know, like I said, I got to the age of nearly 30 and I was like, oh, my head's going to explode. I, I need to just go and do something. This is my vision. And I really, really believe I can do this. So. I just went and did it. So the vision, so you bought the sewing machine mm -hmm. and the material and you, you're now making mm -hmm. dresses. And, that, and to sort of repeat what you said as well, to, to not be a 3,000 pound dress, but mm -hmm. not be a kind of mm -hmm. mass produced where you see two other yeah. girls at the party wearing it. Um, how, did you, how did you piece that together as a business? Because being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. if you believe in Instagram, it's made to look easy. You know, look mm -hmm. at my incredible view of the Dubai Marina and my Lamborghini and so on. It's not easy. So no. you've got a vision. Yeah. You've got passion and purpose but how have you how have you pieced it together to so Murabi? I had a vision of a product I had a vision of style I didn't have a perfect business plan and I'll be honest with you because a lot of people say oh how can I start this because I don't have my three-year business plan or I don't have that and everything's not perfect it's never going to be perfect to start you've got to start somewhere so you know for me I started off just doing bespoke dresses so I would just make one-off dresses either just creatively in my head and I'd, you know, I'd hide a rail in a pop-up shop where people could come and buy them or I started to have clients come in and want me to make them dresses and it kind of, you know, this is 12 years ago, you know, a lot of people look at my story and they think, oh, Nadine's done amazing, she's like an overnight success. No, I'm not. It's been really, really, really hard and, you know, there's been a lot of overnights, there's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears and it, you know, I've learned to become a designer and a seamstress whilst on the path of also growing this business. So important to hear that, right? Mm. You're so right, you know, at a certain point, and I've had this in the build up to talking to you today, mm -hmm. where I, I tell people who I'm filming, oh, I've got one of her dresses. Oh, I know. So I saw Amanda Holden wearing her dress, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. They don't get the graft and mm. the, the, the scenario where it maybe nearly didn't even happen. You know, there are so many stories like that. Have you got um, a scenario along that 12 year journey where it nearly didn't happen or you, you nearly kind of just thought, okay, it's not going to work out? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I'm actually really proud of myself to say, you know, I've failed 10 times and I've got up 12 times. And, you know, I'm going to fail again and I'm going to get up again because that's just life. And, you know, the only time you stop failing is when you stop striving to achieve. So I will definitely keep going and every time I did fail I'm like oh my god I'm so glad that happened because I've learned so much from that and I know I'm not going to do that again so you, you know, learn from our failures yeah. right far more probably than the successes mm -hmm. and another key part of that that sort of journey as well it can be loneliness mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. who have you had um, advising you mentoring you mm -hmm. along the way and of course actually you know self-answering the question slightly with one person that has mm -hmm. connected Steve Hewitt yeah. former CEO for yeah. Tim Shop for 10 years, awesome guy. He speaks so highly of you. He's such a, a, a fan of you and the business. How important is having a mentor and having some support when you're in those trenches as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think 100%. I spent a lot of years, like I say, making mistakes, sitting in the studio overnight, being still being there at 8 in the morning when people, you know, when I was opening up the shop, you know, but I needed to go through that myself. I needed to feel like I have worked my butt off for this. And, you know, 
I feel like I've worked my way to, you know, have someone like Steve as a mentor. You know, he's what he did to Gymshark and what he's actually doing right now with for now is just incredible. And you know, he's he's taught me. I used to think it was just about kind of. In terms of the business side, I used to think it was, you know, what we're doing to grow the business and how we're growing the business and what processes. And it's actually not. It's about the people. And all of a sudden, my business has completely changed because the people are the focus more so than which process we're using or, you know, which format we're going down. Yeah, I love that. Um, and actually just flipping that from talking about the things that haven't gone right and failures that, of mm-hmm. course, you learn from. Sitting here now, um, Nadine Moravi as a brand is killing it. It's doing so well. How do you define success? I mean, obviously everyone defines success in different ways. I feel like my definition of success is if I accomplished my purpose. Um, My purpose is to celebrate and empower women. So if, you know, if I see a picture on Instagram that someone's tagged us in, feeling a million dollars and saying how this was the, you know, the best moment that they've had recently and they felt amazing and it gave them so much confidence, that for me is success. If I, you know, I'm, you know, helping a friend and she's telling me that she really wants to try something but she's scared to, I'm like, we're all scared, you know, take the chance and follow your dream, take a risk and follow your dream. Obviously, you've got to, you know, judge it, but it's it's really about getting that feeling from women to empower them, to give them confidence, whether it's what they're wearing, what they're doing, it's whether I'm spending time with my two daughters and not just spending time with them, but being present for them, which I think is just huge, huge for me. Um, and also just my own, my own intrinsic feeling like I want I want to feel proud for myself I want I want to feel like I've I'm continually growing you know continually striving to whether it be in business whether it be as a mother whether it be in sport um, whichever it is I don't I just want to keep feeling like I'm doing something that little bit extra yeah I get that you mentioned sport of course you mm-hmm. were professional in sport until you know late 20s mm-hmm. You still keep fit now. Mm-hmm. When you were playing sport, there was always a challenge. There was a game to, to aim for, to try mm-hmm. and win. How do you keep fit now? And how important is that physical fitness for mm-hmm. all that goes into being an entrepreneur? So, you know, I do think being fit, staying fit and healthy is very important. Like, if you're a high-performing individual, you've got to be high-performing in, in all of your life, in all areas of your, your life, and you've got to stay fit and healthy at the same time. I actually love running, which weirdly as a kid, when you're training and you have to go and do the bleep test and stuff like that, you don't enjoy it because you've been forced it. And all of a sudden now I'm like, I love running. I love having that time on my own. I love listening to a podcast. And, you know, some days it is a little bit more difficult where I'm like, oh, I'm tired. Do I really want to do this? But my mentality is I get on the treadmill and I'm like, God, I'm so fortunate that I can run because there are actually people out there that can't run and that will be me one day that can't just go and do a 10K that easily. So it's the appreciation and, you know, just not taking things for granted either in life where you can easily say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to go to the gym this morning. Well, not everyone has that choice that they can't do that. I love that. I've actually, you've reminded me of something I'd long forgotten. Like I went to see my granddad in hospital and he was, Mm. he'd had a heart attack and he was, not coming back from it, Mm. and uh, it was an awful day, pouring with rain. I was probably 14 years old, and um, I went over to the window, having been talking to him, and I said, oh, I was going to go for a bike ride this afternoon, but the weather's so awful, and there was a bit of a pause, and then he he was looking out the window, and he said, I'd do anything to be out there. Mm. I I left him that afternoon, I went out on the monster bike ride, got drenched in that mindset, you know, Mm. um, I think there's an element of sport or adventure, or just trying to always have a, a sort of a appreciation that you can yeah. so important what about um, mentally because you mentioned podcasts right so mm-hmm. that's really cool yep. so you go for a run you're actually mm-hmm. mentally stimulating mm-hmm. do you meditate do you um do you breath work the reason why i ask is there's there's so much about being a successful ceo founder entrepreneur mm-hmm. that you've got to win the day win the morning win the day mm-hmm. get up really early do you, do you conform to that 
Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's something which, again, they don't really, I might be wrong, but I don't feel like they teach it enough in schools. You know, they'll teach physical education, but they won't t teach mental education. And, you know, for me, especially if I've had a busy, busy day, my mind doesn't stop. Sometimes before I started getting into meditation, I would go to sleep and I would wake up and I'd not really slept, but I'd be like, I've just done a full day's work in my sleep. I've just, you know, mentally gone through, or I've just done seven designs in my sleep. And it's great, but not really, because you get fatigued and then you can't perform the next day. So um, meditation is something definitely I do before bed, um, just to try and take my mind away from everything. Um, and I think a huge thing which made me realize kind of the power of the mind was when I was pregnant with my first child, um, I, my first, first, first thought was, I'm gonna go into a hospital and have every drug possible and just basically get the baby born or cut out of me or whatever. And it was about six months in, COVID had hit, and I was like, mm, I might need to look at different you know, options here. And I started going, getting into hypnobirthing. And honestly, if I can tell you how I'd gone from one mindset to the mindset where I have two natural births in the lounge of my house with no pain relief, no nothing, but literally just hypnobirthing and mental strength. Wow. And actually really enjoyable. I know that sounds so crazy, but it is the power of the mind. And that for me was a huge learning and probably a positive to COVID because I don't think I would have had the time to really give myself that that mental time to concentrate on it. Yeah, and also yeah. like completely unrelated, but mm -hmm. the, the fact that you have learned that power of your own mm -hmm. mind, let alone inspiring other people mm -hmm. to, to know that you can do that, that's huge life skill. Mm -hmm. Business is all transferable, it makes yeah. you formidable, super yeah. resilient. And then um, I'm also really into paddle right now. So I've, you know, obviously I'll go to the gym, I'll do weights, but I've now discovered a sport which again, since I've last played hockey 15 years ago, I've not really felt that enjoyment of a sport. And, you know, I started off just being like, oh, it's a bit like tennis. And the way I've got into it now, I'm like, no, no, this is like a game of chess and this needs so much discipline to be able to play it. And even, you know, you're talking about breath work, you know, sometimes pressure is on when you, when you play in a sport. And, you know, one of my coping mechanisms, I'll just kind of walk back to the um, serving box and I'll do three deep breaths in, hold my breath for three seconds and then breathe out. And it is, you know, I think people think it's a bit silly sometimes, but it's oxygen to the brain. Yeah. It's, you know, it, 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 you know, it's a fact. So, yeah. so, you know, the other thing with paddle as well, because it's so I, I, mm -hmm. I know some people that play and, and actually was looking to get into it as a business as well mm -hmm. uh, early because it's just clearly spreading and rightly so, mm -hmm. is it gives you that competitive outlet as well. Because yeah. you strike me as someone that, and especially if you play sport for so long, like you were able to still facilitate that and yeah. look forward to the challenge to beat someone and take some frustration out. And, and you need that as a byproduct of being an entrepreneur, busy mum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How do you juggle the, the whole um, two young kids and a growing business mm -hmm. uh, and time for yourself as well, the paddles on? How, mm -hmm. how do you manage that? Yeah, I think it is, you know, the, the gym and the paddle and stuff is my time for myself. The, you know, people say, I can't believe you've got two young kids and you're doing what you're doing. But honestly, I absolutely love it. I, 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 this morning I woke up and I was like, when are they up? When are they up? I miss them. Where are they? Where are they? And like, you know, the very good sleepers, thank, thank, thankfully. But, you know, I just get so much enjoyment out of them. And I get, you know, with kids, they have a dream. They, anything is possible. And I miss that in adults, you know, day to day now. You know, people think, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, I don't have the confidence to do this. Whereas, you know, we should all take something back from being a kid where you're like, oh yeah, well, I can see a you know a pink elephant in the sky or something like that, where it's just having that belief and imagine, imagination to create something or do something. Yeah. So yeah. Natural I, curiosity as well, mm, right? We, we get yeah. knocked out of you a lot. I, I, I had the pleasure yeah. of speaking to Stephen Fry earlier today and he said just, you know, he's a big kid himself, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's where mm -hmm. we connect. And do you know what it comes down to as well? Not just that stifling creativity, but mm -hmm. having purpose. Mm -hmm. And you were so articulate earlier about the, uh, the purpose of the mission mm -hmm. of Nadine Moravi. And I love the fact that, and I, I kind of already know the answer, that it wouldn't be your dresses being worn by the biggest celebrity or 
something really glitzy. But my, my question is, what would be like you kind of you've made it? And I know it's not a destination because mm-hmm. you've already said that, but Nadine Murabi as a business that's growing and flourishing, mm-hmm. what would be like a real I've I've just achieved something huge or like a North Star for you? I think, you know, we spend a lot of time kind of like I say, empowering women, giving them confidence and, and doing a lot for people, you know, buying our dresses. You know, we really, really care about how they're feeling. And I'd like to be able to, you know, again, touching on the Steve Hewitt and the people situation is to reward the team more. I feel like, you know, when someone walks in the office, when a colleague walks in the office and they say, oh, I've just had my mortgage accepted. And I know it's because I've just had a pay rise. That for me is like, I've really been part of something and I'm, I'm helping other people as well. So, yeah, I do feel that, I don't think I'll ever feel, oh, I've just made it, anything like that, because I always kind of know I can help more and do more. And if I ever got out of fashion, I'm always thinking, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't start another brand. I'd want to help girl, young girls, young women with confidence, with, you know, following their dreams and taking risks and, you know, just just not doubt, not having any self doubt. Um, so I think you know, there's there's many things in which I still want to achieve before I think I'd ever get to the point of oh I've made it. But I do think you know our leadership team, our all my colleagues um, in the offices, in the warehouses, everything um, to be able to reward them. Mm. Um, I can feel that like you're a proper team. You know, you might mm. you might be the the kind of leader, if you like, but mm-hmm. you really care. And I, I love the fact that I can tell there's almost a frustration in you where you sort of got to 29 and mm-hmm. then you're like, and now you're, you're probably almost as probably like, God, imagine if I'd started earlier. Mm-hmm. But that suppression, almost like the sort of cork in the bottle, mm-hmm. I can feel that <laughs> coming off you as like proper drive. Yeah. Um, you may know this already, I'm sure you do, but less than 2% of VC funding went to female founders and entrepreneurs last year and even less the year before. Mm-hmm. Have you felt any kind of suppression as a female founder or have you just not even noticed it because you're just so driven in making this all happen um no i think you know we you know we've been contacted as a business um for private equity or vc but you know it had to it has to be the right partner i I wouldn't do anything just for financial gain it has to be you know it's like a marriage at the end of the day and you have to feel like i'm getting support not just financially and I think that would be kind of one of the prerequisites for me um, if I was going to join but you know this is this is my first child this is my baby mm. I'm you know I'm not here to sell out you know no. without a reason or it's a not a, it's not a financial thing it's uh, very much something you're growing and you're you're building a community mm-hmm. um, and what I love about that is that the fact that you can say that you you didn't necessarily go on a beauty parade to try and find mm-hmm. finance and it wasn't coming, you're being approached mm-hmm. and what it makes you wonder is, and this is so aligned with your mission to inspire mm-hmm. female founders to have the confidence to do this. That was a big draw for me to talk to you today, two daughters, 13 and 14, mm-hmm. to follow their dreams mm-hmm. and be inspired by people like It might well be that there aren't enough female founders actually coming through because of the traditional you know, it's, it's, the, it's the boy, it's the guy that goes out mm-hmm. and sets up on his own. So yeah. you trailblazing and, and actually, you know, especially in the world of fashion, it's so visible. Mm. You know, it's, it's an inspiration to so many. If you could go back uh, and give advice to the young Nadine mm-hmm. with the experience, the perspective, maturity you've got now mm-hmm. and give that, I'm talking about that sort of late teens, that kind of career aspirations, mm-hmm. what advice would you give? You know, I think, just touching on, I'll answer this question in a minute, but touching on what you said before, you know, did you think, oh, you wish you would have done it younger? And I don't think I could have done it younger because I wasn't the woman I was. I wasn't, I didn't, again, I was telling you, I cared too much about what people thought. I didn't have, you know, I did have self-doubt whether I could do it. I knew I wasn't experienced or trained in it. And, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like, I've gone through this, you know, learning phase which has made me the person I am to be able to do this I think if I was going to say anything to myself back then is which I realized at 30 stop caring what people 
think about you, which is just you know simple to look back and the fear say of judgment. It. Yeah, and fear of judgment. It's just the fear acceptance. of failure as well, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was I was craving acceptance. You know, whether it was through a boyfriend's family or whether it was through um, being you know smart enough to be in the middle set or you know just just anything. Mm. Um, you know, I, I grew up without my dad passed away when I was 18 and you know it was from that age that I lived on my own and that whole journey was you know I was I was penniless for you know quite a lot of the time but you know I didn't have anyone to rely on I didn't have anything to fall back on but that made me the person I am and so I don't look at I don't look back at that and think god that was an awful time I look back at it and think, what a life lesson that was. You actually was. appreciate yeah. it for what it yeah. was. Do you know, it's like your, your personality mm-hmm. and your personal brand is so, well, it's literally the name of the business, mm-hmm. right? And they're so aligned. Do you think that's why Nadeem Arabi as a brand has been so successful in what was a really established, super competitive industry? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, it goes back to the fact that I didn't know what I was doing. So all so of a naivety sudden, was actually a positive. All right? of a sudden, there's no fear. You know, you'll see it in my designs. Even you know, part of our you know uh, team in our product and design team, I've got way more experienced pattern cutters than me. Um, and they're like, Nadine, you can't do that. And I'm like, why can't I do it? And like, because that's just not what you're supposed to do. I'm like. Listen, we can do anything here. So all of a sudden, the world's your oyster. You can create whatever you want. You can try anything. If you want to put really nice outer fabric as lining because it'll suck you in, then that's what that's what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel like there's just been a lot of learnings throughout, a lot of growth throughout. And I forgot your question. Oh, just how you've done so well in such a competitive industry. Oh yeah. Um, and I think as well, you'll tell from, I'd like to hope that you tell from my designs that there's so much thought and care that goes into them. And maybe you won't because you haven't tried one on, but there yeah. is so much attention to detail. There is so much, you know, even in the packaging and when it arrives, there's, there's like love for <laughs> flowing through it. There's love flowing through it. And, yeah. you know, I think when people receive a Marabi and they wear a Marabi and they get a stranger coming up to them complimenting them on, you know, that shows that the, the care and attention's there. So I don't think you get that a lot in fashion brands, not necessarily nowadays with too no. much fast fashion and everything that's going on. So well, it goes back to that um, purpose and, and passion and heart, mm-hmm. which is your mm-hmm. your personality coming through. Is there someone? a celebrity, a well-known person that you would absolutely love to see in one of your dresses one day? Or has it already happened? Um, I don't know. I always think, oh, I'd love that person to wear something and then someone wears it and I'm like, yeah, okay, they've worn it, but I don't know them. I don't, you know, I, I don't, haven't met them or I don't know them. Mm. I think, you know, work ethic for me and everything and just the fact she's just amazing, I'd say Beyonce. Cool. That's really cool. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yes, it will, happen. it will happen. It absolutely will happen. Mm. Oh, her mum actually wore us um, not that long ago and there's a picture of her and her mum holding hands. And yeah. oh, You are inspirational to talk to. I can t- the whole purpose, passion, is I've, I've never felt it quite as strong. It's brilliant. And I love the fact that it's all fulfilling and such a successful business. And I know how busy you are as well. So thank you for coming to talk to me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, I've loved it. Thank oh, you. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>